Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Yun Nongxing, and I'm from George Mason University. Today, it's my great honor to be here to introduce one paper. Um, Charles Cantina attacks the Borwilded Wilder EBPF on cloud. This paper is a joint work by Tsinghua University and George Mason University. Um, first, it's a background. EBPF is a powerful in-kernel virtual machine that provides a safe and efficient way to extend the kernel. Uh, EBPF is widely used by cloud for network management, performance profiling, and security monitor. Currently, many well-known cloud native products are implemented via eBPF. Over the past three years, it has been discovered that many eBPF features can be exploited to build Linux rootkits. And several talks in DEF CON and Black Hat have shown that some offensive eBPF helpers can harm the other processes. For example, the BPF prop write user allows eBPF programs to modify arbitrary uh, memory uh, process memory and can manipulate the syscall of these processes. Then what is the impact of these offensive eBPF features over containers? We identify three different category attacks triggered by these offensive eBPF features on local container escape, Kubernetes cluster attack and the cloud security center bypassing. We call these attacks as eBPF cross-container attacks, and we also find a new CVE. In cross-container attack, attackers can abuse various eBPF features to escape the containers um, and further exploit the whole Kubernetes cluster without being detected by the defensing tools. And first, it's a local e container escape. We found that even though some eBPF network programs can only work in one namespace, the eBPF tracing features can trace the whole kernel. This means that users in one container can use eBPF tracing programs to probe the programs in other containers or in a host. We also found that Previous non-offensive eBPF features can also harm the containers and perform various attacks to other containers' processes, uh, such as DOS uh, information theft attacks and the container escape attacks. Um, for example, the eBPF raw trace point program can monitor the syscall of a privileged bash process and inject malicious bash command by modifying the read syscall. Um, using eBPF, attackers can easily launch RP attacks to hijack any process outside the container. Um, first, we can use the eBPF program to get the base address of libc when a program wants to map the dynamic library. Then we can offline get useful gadgets from libc and uh, assemble them to RP chains. Finally, we can push the RP chains on the stack of victim processes after they return from the syscall. Um, compared with existing attacks, the eBPF-based RP attack can stably work on any container environment and does not rely on other vulnerabilities. In Kubernetes environment, eBPF attackers can abuse the overprivileged service accounts of Kubernetes pods to distribute eBPF malware and to perform Kubernetes cross-node attacks which can enable them to steal the uh, service account of other parts. And just like this example, when there are high permission parts that can modify the other parts, attackers can steal these service account tokens and abuse the permission of other parts. Um, using eBPF, attackers can prevent the defense tools from collecting logs in both user and kernel space and avoid de uh, being detected by these tools. Moreover, uh, they can build a convert command and the control channel by intercepting the control package from the network layer. Defenders cannot prevent these attacks if, uh, if they do not know the attack threat. Uh, the eBPF attacks assume that 
attackers can use eBPF in a container which requires a CAP system mean and the BPF syscall. And our attacks goes to control the whole host or cluster without being detected. Then it raises a question, are there any other container services providing the CAP system mean? And to answer this question, we investigate both public container services and all repository on Docker Hub. We found that six real world services enable eBPF and all of them can be attacked. Uh, more than 2.5% uh, containers on Docker Hub have eBPF permissions. Uh, eBPF attack can seriously damage the container environment. Um, however, the containers are not aware of eBPF threats. Oh, then we inv uh, investigate the online containers that support running customized code, uh, such as Jupyter, online coding labs, CICD platform, and the online compilers. The results show that uh, only the online coding services enable eBPF permissions. Also, uh, five Jupyter or online shared platforms support eBPF, and all of them can be escaped. Uh, two of them uh, can access other user process. We also investigate all the container services of four leading cloud vendors. All uh, Kubernetes services allow us to create container with eBPF permissions and can be escaped. Uh, three platforms default Kubernetes cluster have overprivileged ports and that may be exploited by eBPF attackers to control the cluster. Under this condition, only Alibaba Cloud Secure Center noticed this attack and other vendors cloud secure centers do not give any warning information. Uh, we also investigate how many Docker Hub repository need to run a container with eBPF permissions. And the following three commands can enable eBPF in a container. And uh, more than 2.5% containers use this insecure command. This means that the remote code execution can launch eBPF attacks on this command. We also found that the famous eBPF tools such as Datadog also uses these offensive eBPF features. Uh, this means users have been enabled all eBPF features for this software and may suffer supply chain attacks. Um, currently, eBPF rules is provided on cloud. Um, people hope to use eBPF as powerful tools to extend their system in different aspects. But eBPF only has one permission level. Uh, as a result, enabling eBPF can make eBPF take control of the system. Um, people need eBPF to dynamically enforce the system in many scenarios. And the eBPF maintainers think that the user should know the high permission of eBPF. As a result, the eBPF usually introduces more risks to their systems. The existing eBPF capability mechanism has two limitations. Um, first, eBPF shares capability with other features and may be unintentionally enabled. And second, eBPF has only one permission level. Programs with permission uh, can use all eBPF features. The existing medications are also improper. Uh, the first solution is to disable BPF syscall to disable all eBPF features, but people need to use uh, eBPF tools. Another solution is to use LSM to allow specific eBPF programs to use it. The problem is that the programs with eBPF permission can still launch the attacks. Also, it's hard to distinguish which programs are trusted. Um, therefore, we propose a new mitigation called CapBit that implements fine-grained eBPF access control by adding a attribute bit to each process. Um, by checking these bits, we can constrain the available eBPF features of a process and prevent other processes to use specific eBPF features. In this way, 
our solution can avoid the target process being exploited by EPGF attackers. Compared with LSM, Kibbit's overhead is nearly to the original capability check of Linux, while LSM, uh, LSM's overhead is more than 15%. Uh, moreover, Kibbit can prevent offensive EPPF features working on specific processes. And in this way, we can prevent the sensitive processes uh, from being propped by untrusted EPPF programs. And finally, it's a conclusion. We found that the offensive EPPF features can be exploited in container and discover the EPPF cross-container attacks. We investigate EPPF cross-container attacks in real world. And finally, we provide a new mechanism to securely use EPPF in container. Uh, that's all for my presentation. Thank you.